Welcome back everybody. This is Eric from Moss Pond and Gun and today we have another how-to video for you. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is actually showing you how you can get a really good amount of accuracy out of your Mosin with just some very basic bedding. Um, the tang areas of the stocks on these Mosins are known for being very generous in terms of their spacing. Okay. And the problem you run into is that the action actually moves in the stock a little bit. It can really throw off your accuracy a lot. So I'm gonna show you how to correct that. Uh, this particular Mosin is a custom one that I'm building for a uh, customer of ours. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. You're gonna need your Mosin stock that requires bedding. This particular one is a laminate, so it's very strong, very good uh, candidate for doing some basic bedding. We will cover full length bedding in another video. On this one, we're just bedding the tang and the recoil lug. All right, you're gonna need your stock. You're gonna need your barreled action with all of your metal work already done. You don't wanna change anything on the action if you're gonna to need to you know, mess with your bedding later. All right, so you wanna make sure all work on the metal is done. We've got a manganese phosphate uh, drilled and tapped for a rock solid mount, base uh, milled down, so this one's ready. You're gonna need your magazine assembly and your pins, your screws rather, your action screws, all right? You're gonna need your brown L's, uh, hardener and resin. You're gonna need your release agent, a small cup to mix everything up in, and you're gonna need a Fordom or a Dremel tool to whiz away some of the wood on the uh, stock. So let's go ahead and get started on that right now. All right, so just to show you an example, here's the action inside the stock. Obviously this space back here is detrimental to accuracy. That's not what you want. Of course, the purpose of bedding is to bed this. We're going to remove the action. In order for the bedding to have something to kind of attach to, we're going to have to get in here with a, a, a burr, and we're just going to kind of agitate the whole back of this tang a little bit. That's going to give the bedding compound area to kind of seep into. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Now, remember that the whole point of bedding is that you want to remove enough wood to replace the bedding you're putting in there. I mean, that's the whole point of having a bedding job is that the glass actually takes up where the wood used to be. Now, obviously we had a nice gap before, so that's not as important, but if you're bedding something that has tolerances that are tighter than what this is, then obviously, yes, you're gonna go ahead and relieve the wood much more than what I just did. All right. I mean, basically just get in there and put yourself some like golf ball looking divots in there. And that's just gonna give the, the glass kind of an area to sort of work into. If you really wanna get that crazy with it, you can actually drill some holes like a little deeper if you want, which a few of these, I might go ahead and do that with the ball. I'm just gonna run the uh, ball in there a little deeper. There we go. That's more like it. All right, we're gonna do the same thing for the recoil lug. Now, the reason that you want bedding in this area also is that you wanna keep the action from moving side to side or forward, but especially backwards. Now, the recoil lug in this stock is made of steel, so it's pretty strong, but the problem is that if the action is moving back and forth or side to side, you're gonna lose a lot of accuracy um, from your setup. And also, you know, depending on how tight the fit and the tang is, you can crack the tang and we don't want to do that. You want to make sure that there's 
uh, contact between all areas of the stock with the actual recoil lug on the uh, stock and the recoil bearing surface on the receiver. So we're gonna do the same thing and just open this up, you know, a little bit. This one's not quite as important, but you still wanna All right, and you're gonna go ahead and scuff up the, uh, the steel on the lug as well. All right, now that you've gotten your wood inleted and divoted out like you need to, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and spray down our action with the release agent. You wanna make sure that you're using plenty of release agent. You don't wanna create a mechanical bond. Now, as you'll see in a later video, the way that we actually bed these stocks you know, um, when you do a full length bedding job, it gets a little bit more difficult. This is just a basic bedding job just to help improve accuracy a little and to keep the stock from splitting. Everything that's gonna come into contact with that glass, we're gonna spray with release agent. Or even if I don't think it's gonna come in contact. Anything that could even be taken that way, you wanna make sure it's got this on it. There's plenty there. Around the lug, obviously. Anything that's got threads, holes, you dang sure want to make sure it's got release agent. All right, that's more than enough for our purposes. All right, we're going to do the same for the screws. The threads on the screws, you want to make dang sure these things, I mean, completely. The shaft of the screw, the threads, everything's got release agent because you screw around and get a mechanical bond on this thing that you can't break loose and you're going to make a real hell of a time trying to get it to come undone same thing on your trigger mech because the uh, glass can seep through these holes you'll see in a moment you know i would do just the front portions right here would be fine i'm probably being more thorough than i need to be but you know, this is a customer's gun, so I want to make sure he's getting a very professional result. And again, you know, hit the inside of the, anything that's threaded, especially if it's bottomed out like that, you want to make sure it's got plenty of release agent. All right, so there's our release agent. We're going to go ahead and mix up our glass next. All right, I buy these little mixing cups from the, you know, restaurant supply store. And they're really handy because, of course, they're disposable. I wouldn't put this acro glass in something that you want to use again, obviously, because once it's there, it's there. I mean, I mean it, it's not, it's not gonna come out again. I mean, once it's, once it's in a container, it's in it. So that's why, you know, you want to use disposable containers. All right, that's the resin. And the mixture is not like 100% precise. I mean, just kind of eyeball it. You're gonna go four parts resin to one parts hardener. Be about right. I've uh, I've never had this stuff not work properly, so I'm assuming I've been mixing it right over the years. All right, at this point, all we're going to do is just take some of our glass and begin dropping it in place. And uh, you know, you want to kind of work quick because this stuff sets up, you know, relatively fast. You just want to make sure the glass kind of fills in all the little divots that you made. That's going to create a mechanical bond that will definitely give you a nice solid surface for the action to sit against. Now, don't be afraid if you get some of the glass seeped down in this hole where the uh, screws go. You're going to get that no matter what. It's not that big of a deal because that's what the release agent's for. When you go to unscrew it, even if you get the gel on the threads of the screw, it's still going to break loose with the Acura glass release agent. Don't worry about that. You definitely don't want this stuff curing up on the stock. So if you get any that spills over, just wipe it off. That'll be fine. All right, that's probably enough glass in the tang. We're gonna add a little more because when you, when you go to tighten down the action, you wanna tighten it down a good bit, but you want it to kind of squeeze out so that you're getting a guarantee that it's filling in all the voids. All right, same thing for the recoil lug. We're just gonna drop some in there, fill in all the spots. All 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, made up our magazine. And again, I'll make sure I got the bottom of this thing sprayed well because it will mechanically bond. Okay. Can never have too much. All right, once we get our magazine in place, we're actually gonna probably work some more gel in there because we want it to set up really well. All right, we're gonna go ahead and drop the action in place and I'm gonna add some more to that front one. It can use it. Okay, that in there. Go ahead and drop our action in place. If we need more, we can always put it in. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. All right, we're gonna start the front screw first. And again, don't worry if you get some acro glass on it. All it's gonna end up doing is giving you a tighter fit anyway, which is fine, that's what you want. Don't tighten it down monkey tight, but get it pretty tight. All right, at this point, what we're gonna do, go ahead and put the rear screw in, get it um, down pretty tight, and then we're gonna fill in even more glass to make up the difference. Now, watch as I tighten this, you should see it kind of start to flow out a little bit along the sides. Yeah, there it goes. That's about as tight as we want to get that. All right. And we're going to come back in with some of our leftovers and we're just going to pour it in so it fills in. Now the glass is going to flow along the shaft of the screw. It's not that big of a deal because remember that's what the release agent is for. Now it's not that detrimental if the glass kind of like you notice in the camera, I'm sure the resolution's good enough where you can see how the glass kind of goes over the top of the tang. It's really not that big of a deal. The release agent, once you pop the barrel from the front, it's gonna crack that little bit of thin glass and that's fine. I'd rather it flow a little more into all the cracks and have a little excess that I have to trim later than for me to not get the lug in the back here that I'm really wanting, if that makes sense which will wipe off a little bit of that extra here in a bit. You can already see that the glass is flowing in there a pretty good bit and it's taking about all it can take and it's starting to, to kind of creep out. That's fine, we're just gonna wipe it off. But I want it, I want it in there. All right, well we've gotten the action torqued down nice and tight and uh, that's pretty much gonna be uh, the completion of this work. About the only thing we can do now is wait so uh, we're gonna set it over in the corner somewhere nice and safe, let it cure up overnight. Um, that's pretty much it. When it comes to time to break this out of the stock, all you're gonna do is pull from the barrel forward and out. And uh, what that's gonna do is break the recoil uh, lug in the stock away first, and then you'll break the tang last. You may have to hit it a little bit. Um, it's not a problem. Just grab you a little uh, polymer mallet, kind of like what I got back here, a little plastic mallet and uh, just give it a tap and it should break loose. Now, if you're ever doing bedding work and it acts like it doesn't want to move, don't force it. You know, give it a little time, hit it a little bit of a time, you know, make sure it's, it's rigidly clamped up and it should pop loose. We'll cover that in a later video. Uh, but for now, people, that's pretty much it. You're gonna break it loose and you're gonna have a perfectly fitted tang area um, for your Mosin and the recoil lug's gonna have lots of support which is really gonna enhance accuracy. It's gonna keep that action from moving so much. Um, I've actually got a, an X sniper rifle that we did a video on where we were shooting it with the bayonet attached. And with iron sights, we were getting pretty dang consistent hits out to you know 450 yards. And all I did with that gun is I worked the trigger a little bit and I bedded the tang in the recoil lug. So here's how to bed the tang in the recoil lug. In a coming video, I will show you how to do a really good basic job uh, on your um, Mosin trigger, okay? So thanks for watching, and you guys have a good one.